Good morning. I want to welcome you to our daily devotion time. Beautiful Monday morning to just get into God's Word and try to dig a little deeper. This morning we're looking at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. We're only going to try to unpack just a little bit of verses 14 and 15 this morning, but the passage here uh, is about a mature person in Christ. The great prayer for the church and for the believer. So let's read the passage as a whole, then we'll back just unpack those first two verses. Paul says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we would ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Father, we thank you for the day that you have given us. I pray, Lord, for my people. Bless my people, strengthen my people. Lord, and I will praise you for all that you would do in their lives, in Christ's name, amen. Now, verses 14 and 15. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole world in heaven and earth is named. Now, as we look at the passage overall, uh, I'd have to say, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking down this line. You know, I've never met a person who took a test without wanting to know what to study. Nor have I met a soldier who was willing to go into battle without his firearm. Also, I've never met a pilot who wanted to lose power while still in the air. But I have met Christians who were perfectly willing to live their lives without God's power. Now, I wonder why would this be? Possibly there are some who are ignorant of how to tap into God's vast resource of power. Others know about God's power, but would rather supply their own source of strength. Now, if we as Christians fail to plug into God's power, the result spills out into how that we would live from day to day. Now, the fruit within us would spoil. You know, you don't go out and buy a chest freezer, fill it full of food, and never plug it up, do you? That would just be ridiculous. We take our relationship, though, with God and turn it into just a religion. Without the power of God, Christianity becomes an empty form. What did Paul tell Timothy? Having a form of godliness, but denying the very power. Without the power of God, the joy of salvation is absolutely gone. The power of sin then overwhelms us and life becomes an endurance, not something to be enjoyed. Do you want the power of God in your life? The power to conquer sin and to become victorious in life? God's power will come only when we learn to pray, to pray consistently and fervently. Do you want power? Uh, do you want the power of God in your life? The power to conquer sin, to become victorious in life. God's power will only come when you learn to pray. Pray consistently, pray fervently. That can never be more upon our minds as we go from one day to the next. Now, this is a great prayer that Paul has for the church and for every believer. 
It is probably the second most important prayer in the Bible, ranking secondly only to the Lord's model prayer. Because of its importance, it should be prayed by believers every day. Certainly, this is the reason that God had it included in the Holy Scriptures. Now, we need to look at the detail of this and study it. Its focus is, uh, is a mature believer in Christ. So let's break down verses 14 and 15 real quickly. Four things here that Paul mentions to us about prayer that we can see. The prayer was a specific cause uh, and a specific purpose. Too often we pray in generalities. Now, the words for this cause refers back to the eternal plan of God and the life of the Christian believer. That is, Paul is referring back to the great salvation and birth of the church, which God has brought about through Christ. No greater thing has ever been done than what has been done through Christ. Now, through Christ, God has brought about salvation. God has given birth to the church, the new body of believers, which he is building day by day. This is still a process that's ongoing. Therefore, it is of the utmost necessity that the work of salvation be completed. The building of the body of believers, that is the church, must be completed. This is the great cause for which Paul prays. Now, secondly, the prayer was so important that it drove Paul to his knees. Now, I'm not saying that the, it's about the physical appearance being on knees, but it is about the heart being on its knees. Bowing is a sign of desperate need and dependency. It is utterly dependent upon God. How can we live a Christian life without him? Prayer is earnest. I mean, this is the, the, the sincerity of what we truly desire. It is reverencing God. God, you're the only one, man. I cannot do this without you. To be humble before God. Thirdly, the prayer addresses God as the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ came into the world to what? Reveal God to show men just what God is like. Man, isn't he awesome, wonderful. Before Christ, man had thought of God as more far away, distant, unconcerned uh, with, with humanity and this world. But Christ revealed that this is not the case. It's a really a false picture of God because God is near. God is vitally interested in you. Can you grasp that God is interested in you, in your world? What's going on in your life? God is interested in that. In fact, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Man, isn't that great? God cares that much, has that kind of concern for your life. Now, the point is this. When Paul prayed to God, he prayed to the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was he who would listen and answer Paul's prayer. Paul was not praying to the ceiling or into thin air, nor to some lifeless concept or idea in his mind. Brothers and sisters, he was praying to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He and he alone is the only living and true God. He's the very God who heard Paul's prayer, and he is the God that will hear your prayer and mine. Glory. Now, fourthly, whew, the prayer was also addressed to the father of the whole family of God. Think about this. That is, God is the father of all believers who have ever believed and trusted his promise Past and present. Now, think about this. What images come to mind when you read the word father? Now, all of us has had 
earthly fathers in some way or another who may have failed us at one time or the other. For some of us, dad was never there when we needed him. For others, dad was always there putting unbearable pressures on kids. No escape in the fact that our view of our Heavenly Father must go through the grid of our experience with whom our earthly fathers may be. But because of sin, our view of God has been warped, hasn't it? Only God's Holy Spirit can heal that warped image. Once the healing process begins, our prayer life can undergo a radical change. Our Father in heaven becomes an accessible, intimate, caring, bigger than all of our problems, Heavenly Father. Think about that. As you go through your day today, I want you to think about, is it really sufficient to have vague or general terms when you're praying. Uh, is your prayer life more intense when there's a personal crisis? Wonder what it would be like if you had intensity even when things are going well. Father, thank you for the day you've granted us. How wonderful it is to rise this morning and just get into your word. Have your great way throughout this day, Lord, and we honor you for all that will be accomplished in the name of Christ. Amen.